What is up YouTube? That's it here and today I'm super excited to be bringing you the best video ever on this channel. This is going to be part one of ten in a series where I show you guys the ten steps you can follow to make the perfect VGC team and how to correctly make a team for a tournament setting. These are 10 steps that I follow every single time I go to a regional. If you guys uh, have been checking out my Twitch stream recently, you know, I recently went over every single regional I went to on stream. That was a super fun highlight. And uh, one thing that we really noticed was that, huh, I actually top cut almost every single event I go to. I get in, like the top 16, top 32 out of like hundreds of players at every single event I go to. How do I do that? You ask. I follow the steps that I'm going to be going over today and I just want to give a little bit of a disclaimer I'm only going to be going over the first step today If you guys want to see this whole 10 step process and you know review it at your own leisure This is a free to view post on my patreon think about checking it out Like I'm gonna leave a link to it in the comments. Just check it out. It's completely free I'm not asking you guys to pay anything This is a free to view post for everyone just so you guys can get a taste If you guys like this sort of content and you want to see more Maybe you can think about joining the patreon even the lowest tiers get to see everything but back to what I was talking about, the 10 steps to making the perfect BGC team and how to correctly prepare for a tournament setting. Um, one thing I think that a lot of people don't really realize is the value in correctly taking notes. And once you have all of the data and once you have correct data, um, it's basically just like connecting lines and connecting dots. Everything becomes a flow chart. Uh, you basically go on autopilot or enter the zone and just let you know the notes that you took dictate all of your matches so your autopilot level just becomes like a level that's so much higher than your average opponent you ever watch like dragon ball z and you ever see like when someone's like really really strong and the opponent's doing everything to beat them and they can't do anything that's basically what you get to where your opponents have to be this tall to ride like your team <laughs> so uh basically like i said we're gonna be going over uh just the first thing today, but this is a process that's meant to take a few months to compete or complete. Sorry. Normally when I like to go to regionals, I like to plan my regionals out two to three months ahead of time. So like right now, you know, right now it's August and you know, the next regional would probably be something in like October, maybe even December. And so I'd already be kind of making the ideas for what I want to do. And it's not like I just pick a team and say, okay, this is my team. Here we go. No, what we want to do is accurately gauge a Full meta, we want to take, you know, dozens and dozens of hours of notes and see what's popular. And then from there, we can build our teams. I've never been the type of person just to force a meme Pokemon because I want to use it. I've never been the type of person to say, it's time that I'm going to win with my favorites. I've always used my niche crazy off meta picks when they're relevant to the meta. And another really cool thing about this whole uh, you know, 10 step process is you're actually gonna get two or three teams that are regional level quality out of this team building process. So if you guys like this video, you wanna see more, if you have any questions also, feel free to let me know in the comments below and uh, let's just hop right into it. So the 10 steps right here, over the next month or so, on stream, I'm gonna be showing you every step that I personally take to make a regional level team. These are 10 steps that I take whenever I start making my teams from scratch, and I hope they help you as much as they helped me. As I previously stated, I will be streaming all of my actual, uh, you know, runs of me taking these notes and building teams from scratch. I'll be streaming that all on Twitch over the course of the next month. So think about checking out the Twitch channel. There's a link about that in the description as well. So what is step one? Let's scroll down just a little bit. So step one, we are going to be watching a lot of replays. Ah, let's, uh, there we go. So step one is actually just watching replays. A lot of people are like, that's a, what do you mean step one is watching replays? How are you supposed to get replays if you don't play? You're watching other players replays. There is absolutely no reason for you to be playing the game right now. Because if you were to play the game right now and force yourself into saying, I want to play with Torn Ogre, I'm just going to play Torn Ogre, you're getting yourself into a Torn Ogre mindset. The whole point of like the first four or five steps of this little program here are to get you to think outside the box and get you to start problem solving in ways that, uh, you know, you normally wouldn't problem solve. If you're really comfortable with one team, we're gonna be watching a lot of replays from a bunch of different type of teams and get you to really to think, what do I wanna do in this situation? It's getting your mind to open up and problem solve and always be thinking proactively instead of thinking reactively. Always thinking proactively, always thinking what you could be doing to put yourself in a better position is always gonna be better than thinking, how do I maintain my position? Because, you know, putting yourself in a better position is doing 
you know, just a better job of maintaining, right? If you're putting yourself in a better position, you're still maintaining. So by proxy, thinking proactively is just a really good way to look at the game. So we're going to take a lot of notes on common chords, leads, and patterns we see from other players. And I'm going to talk about it. We're going to write down literally everything. Um, we're going to try our best to guess what four Pokemon uh, each player will be bringing. Right? So that's talking about their leads and their secondaries. This not only improves your initial team preview phase, which is probably the most important thing about regionals, um, but gets you used to the idea of looking at how impactful the correct secondary Pokemon can be. This exercise is great for opening up uh, your view of the game past the first turn and will be a building block when you establish for future steps moving forward. So I really think that analyzing the team preview, you can be a player who's not very good. And when I say not very good, um, I'm talking about the actual game itself. Like you get into the game and you're like, uh, you can get protect beta, you can get caught off by redirection, you can be a player that's not very good. But if you have a really well-made team, and you know every single game what four Pokemon you're going to bring because you're so comfortable with what your team does, I guarantee you're going to win a lot more games than you actually think. And it's going to be so important, you're going to realize when you know everything that your opponent's bringing, and you, you know just when they're safe and when they're not safe, you know what moves to use to punish things like switch-ins because you know they have to have certain Pokemon. So there's a lot of things you can uh, start disrespecting about your opponent's team and team preview phase if you know what four they have to bring. And we're going to talk about knowing what four they have to bring by talking about what our teams say that they do. So let's scroll down just a little bit more and talk about the next little bullet point. And like I said, if you want to look at this whole little uh, thing for yourself, uh, definitely check out the link to the Patreon. It's going to be there. It's completely free to view this. So this is a, a good example of how to know what Pokemon they're going to be bringing. So when you are wrong in guessing their leads, like let's say, you know, they have a team that's like Kyogre, Serena, Tornadus, Regilecki, Rillaboom, Incineroar. And let's say there's a Pokemon there. Like, let's say we assumed they would bring like Tornadus, Kyogre, Regilecki, Incineroar, and they brought Rillaboom, right? We have to think like, Huh, why'd they bring Rillaboom instead of Incineroar? That's weird. Or maybe they brought Incineroar instead of the Rillaboom. We have to think why. And I want to start really posing this early to you guys. Think why about everything. Why did this happen? Why is my opponent using this? Um, is it because they have something they want to do with it? Are they playing on autopilot? Are they saying, I would like to Flare Blitz this Pokemon? Or are they bringing this Pokemon because of something that we did, right? Think about that. Are they bringing it to react to what we've forced them to do with our team preview? Get that thought in your head. A good example here. Um, so basically like maybe if there's something that's a little bit off and you can't really understand why, and like maybe it's not something you did, maybe it's not something that they did. Uh, maybe there's an item that's a little bit weird. Maybe something's holding a choice scarf that you're not thinking of. Maybe something's holding a safety goggle that you're not thinking of. So try and put yourself in that position and think, huh, it's really weird that that's on the board. Uh, judging by the data that I gathered, that shouldn't be in this team preview or that that shouldn't be uh, brought to this matchup. So start thinking of like what's going through their mind. Put yourself in your opponent's shoes a little bit more often. It's going to be super important. Um, you can use tells like this when they have like win one weird Pokemon that they shouldn't be having to, you know, give yourselves an advantage and uh, not have to actually go through the, you know, basic play style that you would normally have to go through. You don't have to follow your own flow chart if they deviate early. So a good example is when you're using a Ho-Oh, right? You ever just lead Ho-Oh and then someone leads with their Groudon or their Entei, right? And you're like, huh, normally that would not be good here. You know, Groudon, first of all, sets the sun. You can just Sacred Fire their Groudon, burn it, almost KO it. That's great for you. And same thing when they lead their Entei, it's like, okay, Entei doesn't have any power against Ho-Oh. But one thing that both those Pokemon have in common is they both can carry Stone Age or Rock Slide. And one really good tell that they have those moves is if you're using Ho-Oh and they lead with them. Uh, it's happened years, and it's, you know, it's always been like that. Ho-Oh takes that four times rock weakness, and you can usually gauge when your opponent has a rock type attack when you're the Ho-Oh player, and they lead with something that would normally be a bad matchup, but it's teching that rock attack for Ho-Oh. So in this case scenario, if we have a Ho-Oh and they have a team that has like Entei or Groudon in it, we can just not even lead the Ho-Oh, and we can wait to see if they lead with those Pokemon, and if they do lead with it in a situation where normally it would not be that great because Ho-Oh would have an advantage in the matchup uh, if they didn't have the rock attack, if they do lead with it, that means, guess what? They have a rock attack and you can use that data to say okay cool so if they have a rock attack on like an Entei that might mean they're vested um they like what are they cutting to have that rock attack are they cutting e-speed are they cutting something like crunch for shadow rider you can use all this stuff to your advantage and just expand your game knowledge from there so like the example I said here, we don't even have to leave with the ho -Oh. We don't even have to bring the dang thing if we don't really want to. Uh, but we know a lot more about the opponent's team because they're respecting our options. And that's one thing I really want to get you to, you know, open up to. 
We're not going to go over the rest of the list, but this thing goes super, super in depth. It goes on for a very, very long time, and it took me a long time to type it up, and I would highly recommend you give this a look. Over the course of the next month or two, we're going to be going over each one of these steps in depth, and we're going to show you guys my full process for how I like to build my own teams. But for now, let's take a look at Showdown, and uh, let's start watching some games. So we're just going to go to Showdown, and I would highly recommend you guys go to Showdown as often as possible when you're testing stuff like this. This is the best place to watch games. I could say you could watch streamers, but what's going to happen when you watch streamers as opposed to just watching games on Showdown, you're going to be influenced by what the streamer's talking about. So you don't want to, you know, watch Cybertron or Ashton Cox or even me. Like, you could watch our games, that's totally fine. But for this process, what we're going to be trying to do is we're going to be trying to watch probably 7 to 10 games in a session. And that's going to be one session. You can do as many sessions as you want a day, but you're going to try and watch that many kind of back to back to back because that's how many rounds a regional Swiss would be. So if we go into this, uh, we're just going to watch battle. And if you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to let me know in the comments below. If I'm not doing a good job of explaining this, uh, you know, this is probably my first time really explaining it in this much detail. So we're just going to go to showdown and uh, we don't even need to set like a minimum ELO. We can just literally watch anything. Let's look at this first game. So always pause it. And so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking a look and we're going to be putting ourselves in both positions. So we're going to be thinking, what is this player bringing? And what is this player bringing? Uh, you know what I mean? Um, so, and we're trying to, we're going to try and guess what four they're going to bring. And one way that we're going to do that is we're going to try to correctly analyze each team preview. Normally when I do coaching sessions on Patreon, I get my people to start thinking, what items are on each Pokemon? And a good way to dictate what items are on each Pokemon is to say, what is the reason for each one of those Pokemons, uh, you know, in the team? What are their fake out users? What are their forms of speed control? What are their forms of terrain? Do they have any intimidate users? What is every single one of those Pokemon's ability? One really cool thing about Showdown is you can like hover over these Pokemon and you can see a lot of this stuff. So it's great for analyzing that data. Uh, it's a little bit of a crutch, you know, cause you can't play this way in the actual game. But, you know, for this learning process, it's definitely helpful. So obviously, right off the bat, we see Dragonite has like multi-scale or inner focus. Sylveon is probably rocking that Pixelate. Whimsicott, this doesn't look like a core of Whimsicott. Definitely going to be Prankster. Uh, Ho can have both Pressure or Regenerate, or if they're both very, very good. Feeny could have Telepathy, which is probably not in this team. It's probably going to be the Misty Terrain. And uh, Togemaru's Lightning Rod. So Togemaru, Feeny, great core from 2017. Uh, this whole core right here is very, very nice. I like this person's team a lot. Uh, now that we know a little bit more about each Pokemon's uh, abilities, we can start talking about are they physical or special and these are things that you have to notice and this is the whole value of taking notes here we can see dragonite can be built physical or special you know the special dragonites usually are built more on rain teams with like thunder and hurricane probably not going to see that so i would say dragonites in the physical category uh sylveon could definitely be like a quick attack self policy proc in that dragonite but it's mostly going to be special so watch out for that whimscott's going to be special ho is probably going to be physical i've seen a little bit of special ho, ho recently but this is lower on the ladder so definitely going to be physical ho ho uh, Feeny is going to be special and Togemaru is going to be physical. So now that we know items, or not items, so now that we know uh, physical special tendencies, now that we know abilities, we can start talking about items. Uh, Dragonite is more commonly built with a weakness policy if they have something in the policy proc. So definitely watch out for the policy on Dragonite. Sylveon, probably not going to be rocking that pixie plate because it's paired with the Dragonite. I wouldn't be surprised personally to see some sort of pinch berry or even like a throat spray on the Sylveon here. Uh, the Woodscott's going to be sashed. Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh can be kind of weird. Um, Lefty's good on Ho-Oh. Uh, damage reduction barriers are good on Ho-Oh. Something like a rock or like an electric reduce barrier are great on Ho-Oh right now. I personally like Rocky Helmet on mine. You see wider every once in a while too. Uh, Feenies are usually built lefties. And Togemaru, if they're a lightning rod, can be built sash. But I'm thinking this, it's probably still lightning rod. I have no idea what that Togemaru item is. So that's one thing where we have an enigma. So the next thing I want to get you to talk about is we open up our notepad. Oh my goodness, let's let's open up a notepad. You can see my notepad right here. Normally I would write out these notes, but it's gonna be a lot easier just to type them for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this up here and I'm gonna start typing away. So we see team one, team one. And uh, I'm gonna try and type, I have a very limited space to type here. I've never really actually like, typed out my notes like this. And the reason why I think notes are really, really good is you can always look back at notes and notes are things you're not allowed to look at like uh notes in the game like uh when you start a region you have to have a blank page you can't like go back but what you can do is you're saying like oh i'm playing gavin michaels and you can scroll back to the last time you played him uh you can bring your notes with you to events and look at them there i'm a, i'm definitely the type of person that says like or that believes if you write something down it's a lot easier for you to believe it so or or like internalize it and you know remember it uh 
Let's, let's spell things correctly. I usually, so normally when I actually take notes, I actually normally just like jot down like a random thing. So like whimsicott, instead of typing out whimsicott, I'll just type whims. Uh, I usually just go like that, like ho-oh and uh, Feeny. So I usually like to abbreviate, just make it as fast as possible. All right. Ah. So I actually like to do the whole Togemaru. Is that even how you spell that thing? Oh man, I'm so bad at spelling. Look at me. Uh, Togemaru, perfect. All right, so we have our notes right here. So that's just team one. We're just looking at team one. Uh, we haven't even looked at this other team yet. So we haven't even really talked about what we think they're going to bring to beat this other team. We haven't even talked about it. Look at, we've already spent like five minutes in this team preview. We haven't even really gotten into it. Let's take a look at team two. All right, so we're gonna switch our sides. And normally I was thinking about having like a second webcam to show you guys how I take notes. That's probably gonna be for like an, another part of the series. Uh, but team two, if we take a look, it's gonna be Drapion, love Drapion. Drapion, Pelipper, Galvantula, uh, Quag. It's a cool team over here. Uh, Ice Rider. And Roserade. Perfect. So the next thing we really want to look at is what do we think that both players are going to be leading? Um, I guess we can also just break down again uh, what we think that uh, top team is. So Drapion, you can have like battle armor or sniper. Pelipper can bring to the table uh, Drizzle. Galvantula is usually built with like compound dies. Quagsire is usually built with unaware. Ice Rider has the uh, whatever that Ice Rider ability is that gives it glacial crazy boosts as one. So no no berries and it gives like a beast boost to attack. And Roserades are usually built. Um, see, Roserades are kind of weird. Sometimes you see Technician off some weird moves, but it's probably just natural cure. Roserades actually a pretty decent mon right now, in my opinion. So now that we know a little bit more about each team, we're going to try and guess what each team is going to be bringing to this matchup. Right, so what do we think each team is going to be doing? Obviously, this team looks like it could set Trick Room. It could. This is a weird looking team. It might be like a sticky web team. Um, I guess like items for these guys. Drapion could have the uh, the crit item. This could have Pelipper could have a Sash. Galvanish could have a Sash. Roserade could have a Sash. Um, I know I'm not doing as good a job of analyzing this team as I should because uh, I definitely do think that like this player over here is going to win the one with the Ho Dragonite but I mean Ice Rider could have good matchups against like if they want to go all in on that Dragonite and then like, Ice Rider gets a beast boost into it uh, it'll just one shot that Ho-Oh but I do think that there's like a lot of good play potential for like the Ice Rider Pelipper as well so it's hard to say it's hard to say let's start thinking though let's go back to the top one so we go here and what do we think this player is going to leave with um there's not much this player can do to stop Quag, I guess. So let's see. Do you think they're going to lead Whims? Because Whims could taunt a lot of these things. I think Whims is a decent enough lead. Uh, Whims seems like a decent bring. So let's spread down Whims. So I think they're going to bring Whims for sure. We think they're going to bring... Um... Gee, Feeny. Feeny is pretty dope here. I don't think they're bringing Feeny. I think Wim ho -Oh is good because ho -Oh is great here and ho -Oh is great against a lot of these. So I think Wim's ho -Oh. All right. So those are what I think leads are going to be. Wim's ho -Oh. I don't think they're going like Sylveon Dragonite. If there was Sylveon Dragonite, that's going to completely deviate from the rest of how this works. I, th I wouldn't be surprised to see Togemaru because they'll get Galvantula. And I would say Feeny. I'm just not really feeling the Dragonite versus like Ice Rider tech. So I think the pl player one on top is going to go uh, Whims, Ho-Oh, Togemaru, Feeny. And the reason why I think that is, like I said, I don't think the Dragonite Sylveon is that great versus this stuff. Uh, and I think Togemaru is great versus Galvantula. It gives us more fake up control. This really enables the Ho-Oh to do its best. And Feeny is a great switch in on things like this. So Feeny is great like here. And if they don't bring the Fiend, they bring the Sylveon, or they bring the Dragon instead, you know, we'll deviate that. We'll talk about that when, you know, we see it. What do you think this player is going to bring? There's no fake outs, but I do think they're going to want to set up their sticky web. I definitely think it's a sticky web squad. So I do think that Galvantula is going to be here. So Galvantula. I don't know if they're leading Ice Rider. I don't think they would want to lead with Ice Rider. I wouldn't be surprised to see Pelipper. me all right so pelipper ah, this is why i like to write my notes right uh so two pelipper 
I don't think Drapion's necessarily coming here. It has poison attacks. I, you know what? Maybe they're going to Drapion. And they're going to bring Ice Rider. All right, so those are my guesses. And let's see if I'm right. What do you guys think? You guys think I'm going to be right? I will say that this player up here is much higher rated than the other one. Okay. So let's just start it off. So Drapion, Pelipper. So I'm already, um, so I've already gotten half of my leads right, but I am still 100% for like what Pokemon are here. So Drapion, Pelipper, really good. So Togemaru and Dragonite. So they're, they're deciding to deviate here. So this top player up here, they decided to brought, they brought Dragonite. So right here, we're going to write down, um, Toga right here. And this guy brought another thing we can actually look at is like the order that they brought. This guy brought Togemaru Dragonite. This guy brought Drapion Pelipper. So that means that he selected Drapion first, which if play for, people are playing on autopilot, that means that this is the thing that they know that they wanted the most. They looked at this team and they said, I need that the most. And so you can use that to your, your own advantage in your own games by saying like, wow, they really want this thing. Like, why do they want it? You know, why wouldn't they select something else instead? Uh, and there probably isn't going to Drapion because there's three fairies on this team. But let's see. At this point, it's not even really important to watch like who plays what i guess you're trying to still note tendencies of what pokemon get fake out of what pokemon get uh what moves but right now we're just trying to analyze like what pokemon are actually in the game what do we think is going to happen right here we think this guy has fake out speed control so we can go fake out there and like dragon dance and there's not that much trick gun can do there's the protect yep awesome dragon dance Dragon Dance. It's almost like I played the game, right? It's almost like I played the game. Easy Dragon Dance from this player over here. Uh, as for the second turn, Pelipper's on cooldown from its uh, Sash, so you can just KO that there. Uh, and then probably just KO right there. Wing Beat. Oh, that's weird. Uh, that's a little bit weird. A little bit off, I would say. Yeah, okay, so Togemaru's not gonna have Zing Zap. That's fine. So Tailwind. That's a little bit it's crazy. So we see a Stomping Tantrum. Sash Togemaru. So there's our Sash. Okay. Second Dragon Dance. I don't I don't dislike that. That's kind of nice. Second Dragon Dance is nice. Cross Poison. Wow, so this Dragon Dance is actually pretty big right now. So it's Roost Dragon Dance. Dual Wing Beat. Probably going to be something weird. So Hurricane from Pelipper. And we see Cross Poison. Looks like no poison yet. So we see Ho-Oh coming out here. So we want to write down Ho-Oh. On um, the Sky Player. So now that we've seen these Pokemon here. What do we think the last one is? It's probably not going to be Wims. Um, it's probably not going to be Sylveon. It's probably... It's probably Feeny, like I just said. And they switched out the Wims for uh, the Dragonite. Which, I think we talked about that happening. So it's good to know. And so we know that like this player here, like in this board here, if the last Mon is Feeny, you can just start going for like raw electric attacks now that togemaru is gone which you know if this guy has his galvantra on the back that's going to be the right play switch out for quag so we see quag here all right so now that we see this guy he brought quag instead of what we thought um probably instead of the galvantra that means he's not gonna have any electric attack so right now we can see this because we know he has to have his restricted right now this is telling us a since you showed quag that means you do not have roserade and you do not have galvantula which means this player with the Dragonite over here does not have to respect electric attacks, does not have to respect grass attacks anymore. This Feeny is going to absolutely pop off if it is their last Pokemon. And being able to notice this early is very, very important. Off this first turn switch in, you know everything about what your opponent's trying to do. So Protect Ho-Oh, not that bad. Yeah, just go for Wing Beats. Um, this Quagsire is going to be almost impossible to beat, I think. Because right, like uh, this Dragonite is just not going to be able to ever break it. Because Quag's going to have Unaware. It's a good roost here. I want to see if they're ice beaming. Iron Head. Oh, oh that's not good. Yeah, this is going to be over. This person's going to get Toxic Stalled hard. Hey, you know what? It does happen like that. Switching out Drapion for Pelipper. Nice play. Get Reset that rain. Ice Punch. We've seen his whole moveset. Very, very weird moveset. Yeah, this person's getting dumpstered right here. Hey, you know what? Good job, Quag Player. Uh, Quag Player is like 100 points higher on the ladder than them. And it is Feeny, so we were 100% right. And, you know, maybe they should have used it better. 
But yeah, there's nothing that you could ever do to break this Quag, I don't think, because it has Unaware. So like Dragonite's never going to do any real damage to it. There's the Ice Rider, so we were right here. There we go. Good Scald here, but the Misty Train's going to make it so it doesn't die. Big Glacial Lance. Uh, Ice Rider just coming in hot. Yeah, there's nothing that this guy can really do here. Good job getting the KO there, but Glacial Lance is going to finish this guy off. And it was Misty Seeds Feeny. Not bad. So, one thing that we saw, you know, and I would say, you know, normally I would be writing down every single turn. I didn't want to type all that out. I'd write down every single turn so I'd be able to correctly analyze my moves so I could take better notes for later. But one thing that we noted is we assumed that they would bring, you know, these Pokemon. And they brought this, so they deviated one Mon. And we assumed that they would bring this Pokemon. And they deviated and brought, you know, Quagsire, which is actually a pretty good Mon in the situation. Um, but I would say getting three out of four, but then immediately noticing what your opponent is safe in doing uh, is very, very, you know, good to know. We were never really caught with our pants down because we kind of talked about what we would do in every situation off every single weed. So let's go in another one um, and let's see if we can uh, do it. Let's see if we can do it again. Let's go into another game. So that's just one game. Let's refresh this. Let's see. Is there any, who do we want to look at here? It's a lot more standard. Awesome. This is a, this is way better. Uh, so team. So this is gonna be team three. Is gonna be Kyogre, Rilla, Torn, Serena. Weavile, Lucky, Team Four, Lele. Cool, cool to see Lele. And Sin, Urshifu. We don't really know what type that is yet. Rilla, Lucky, and Shadow Rider. Awesome. So these again are a lot more standard teams. I think that if I'm thinking correctly, this is just a copy of Santino's Players' Cup Invitational winning team with like the weird Weavile with like the Taunt Serena and potentially the Scarf Ogre. Again, I don't actually know. Um, I would say that one thing that you should be doing also as well is if possible, you know, look up what teams are popular from like the popular streamers and the popular tournaments that happen. Personally, I would say that I don't like to look up those things that much because I feel they heavily influence my play. Like, uh, I know you're probably thinking like that, so what do you mean? You just said look it up, but you don't look it up, that's not fair. When What I like to do is like when I fight these teams on the ladder and I freaking get dumpstered because they're so good, um, then it's a lot easier for me to internalize why I lost than just looking up a rental code and knowing something has this spread. So it's just easier for me to remember by holding L's than it is for me just looking up other players doing well with something. That's just my own personal opinion. It gives me my own personal experience into it. So what do we think each player is going to do? And I think one really underrated aspect of this little exercise here is it gets you to look at not only playing against Ogre, but playing against Ogre as Shadow Rider. It gets you looking at playing um, against Shadow Rider, but against Shadow Rider as Ogre. It's going to put you in so many different situations where you need to find win conditions uh, with tools that you normally wouldn't use. It's this sort of thing that we're going to be building on in future steps moving forward. Uh, and we're going to be trying to find a bunch of different cool things to build around. And to do that, you need know, a little bit more experience. So let's go back and start off. What do we see here? We see fake outs from Weavile. We see no Intimidators here. We see Terrain Control from Rillaboom. Weather Control from potentially uh, Kyogre. Even Tornadus could have Rain Dance. We see Speed Control from things like Regilecki and Tornadus. I would say this is probably one of the best teams in the meta right now. There's not that many things you can actually do to stop a Kyogre that can be paired with A, Fake Out, A, Fake Out Protection from Serena, uh, Speed Control from Leki, uh, a more aggressive Fake Out Speed Turn from Weavile, and potential uh, Tailwind and or Rain Dance from Torn. It's a very, 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 very good team that could technically take any opponent into the mix-up blender um but let's talk about items if it is santino's team and i'm thinking about the items correctly i think it's a scarf ogre uh probably going to be a vest on the rilla um i don't know the item on torn but i think a lot of people are using safety goggles or sash torn right now um serena i think on this team held the citrus berry if i'm remembering correctly i think it's better to put the sash on the reggie lucky actually and i don't know if the weavile was like a fling weavile but i think we move up with fling weavile is super nice right now 
Um, let's take a look at the other team. Think about what items we see over here. So this team does have Intimidate. I think it's the number one thing you should be looking out for. I think if you want to, you know, start, this is the thing to take notes if you're taking notes here. Look up every single Pokemon that gets Fake Out, every single Pokemon that gets Wide Guard, every single Pokemon that gets Trick Room, every single Pokemon that gets Tailwind, and familiarize yourself with those Pokemon. Uh, just because they're going to be, you know, the Pokemon that have the most impact in this team preview phase. So again, we see the Incineroar with Fake Out. We don't see any Wide Guard users. So that's going to be a good tell for the ogre uh to be brought in this game it's probably not gonna we might not see the weavile just because uh there's no reason for it to use faint or fake outs against things like Lele. you know weavile still might be pretty good for uh, shadow rider but we're not saying that weavile has to come in this matchup now so Lele can be really good sometimes they're built with scarf uh, they're usually built with scarf when they're paired with shadow rider um, and since they're usually built a little bit bulkier sometimes with a pinch barrier citrus probably not going to be vest because the vest is probably on the rilla uh, i would say it's going to be either life orb on the shadow rider i would say the good shadow rider players are using sash right now but sash is probably gonna be on the lucky and urshifu i'm getting urshifu water vibes here and if it is urshifu water it's probably packing like a mystic water it could still be sash it could still be urshifu dark but i think sash is better off on the lucky and if the sash is on the urshifu and the magnets on the lucky you know that's something that we might be able to analyze based off how much damage we take maybe we might have to open up the damage calculator so let's go back over here and start thinking about what each player needs to do so when looking at these themes, when, 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 sorry, when knowing what your opponent's going to be bringing, I know that I'm generally glossing over just because I have a lot more experience. I think that what you should be doing is you should be looking at your opponent's team and you should be saying, what does my opponent need to do to win? What's their win condition? What do they actually want to do to win? Uh, it's a lot easier to do this in restricted formats because they have a Pokemon they should bring every time and that's the restricted. So each one of these players is going to want to bring their restricted and then cater their play style around making that restricted succeed. I definitely think that the Ogre player is going to want to lead Ogre. They're going to want some speed control and they want to bring something like Serena to, you know, make it so they can't eat grassy glides in the face. That's a generally a great way to play, especially against a team that doesn't have other forms of speed control in it as well. Uh, basically saying no tailwind. So we know as the Shadow Rider player that that's what the Ogre wants to do. So if I was the Shadow Rider player, what I would be doing is really doing something that would respect Torn Ogre while also giving me outs to deal with, um, you know, things like Lecky and Serena. I would definitely be over-respecting Serena here. And, and that would mean if I'm using the Shadow Rider here, I'm probably not bringing Urshifu water just because it's not great for Serena Rilla, which, you know, the Ogre player could definitely bring. So let's see, what is the Ogre player going to bring? The Ogre player is going to bring um, probably the Kyogre, right? So let's go one Kyogre and two Torn. I think that you should always open up Kyogre Torn because this is where the flow chart starts for the Ogre player. You have to respect the immediate potential of Tailwind, Prankster Tailwind Water Spout. From there, they can go Protect Ogre, Switch and Rilla to gain Fake Out Control or uh, Switch in the Serena to stop Fake Out. So like a, a, a good way to play this would be something like Kyogre Torn, Serena, and uh, Rilla. Now, I'm gonna say right here with the Rilla, you might also see Regilecki. And I don't think there's a problem with doing a little slash there, saying it's gonna be one of those. It's gonna be one of those. I don't think that the Weavile comes to this matchup. And you know what? That might be my inexperience in playing with this. You know what we're playing these games? If they bring the Weavile, the Weavile pops off just like in that last game where that Quagsire, like I was made to be a Quagsire believer after this game. Um, it's the reason like this that we're taking these notes. It's to get you to open up your mind's eye to what else can be good by watching other people uh, that know what they're doing. So if they want to use their Reggie, I think if Reggie's Sash, it's definitely coming because Reggie's what gives you that additional level of speed control to basically deal with their Regilecki. And it's always a good idea to bring Regilecki if they don't have a ground type, in my personal opinion. Like Regilecki hits a lot of these for great damage and being able to outspeed Shadow Rider is just absolutely massive. Now, what do we think? That the Lele player is going to do. I think they're definitely bringing their Shadow Rider, but I don't think it's going to be in the lead. I definitely think they're going to go a little bit more. Um, so they could open up with Lele. Uh, they could open up Lele Shadow Rider. If they do that, they automatically lose to the Water Spout. So they're not doing that. They're probably going to open up with Rilla Lecky. Rilla Lecky. Uh, as I was playing a lot of Torn over yesterday, and I found a lot of people leading this against me. And the reason why this is such a good lead, you have Fake Out against the Torn, and they're also probably Sashed Lucky. Uh, and then in the back, I would bring my Shadow Rider. And it's kind of hard. I don't. I, if this is Urshfu Water, it's weird. I would bring this if I was playing because I like Urshfu Water into Ogre, just because it can switch in. It's the only switch in this team has for a Water Spout. So if we do see Urshfu Water, like that's the thought process moving forward. 
I don't think they bring the Insin, even though Insin's good versus both these, just because it cuts the damage uh, versus because uh, of the water. So I definitely think the last mod they're probably bringing here is either Lele, just to regain control of the temp uh, of the terrain, or something like uh, let's see. So we know they want these two, three. It's gonna be Lele. It shouldn't be Insin, and it shouldn't because Insin is also not great because Queen of Majesty. If this is Urshifu Dark, like maybe we see it. I highly doubt it. I think it's Lele. So let's just go into the game and see if we're right. So there's a Leki and Rilla. It's almost like I play the game and I'm able to correctly analyze their leads. Wow, look at me, professional player. That's plus one. Versus Ogre, Torn. Look at that. Look, isn't that beautiful? So we're able to correctly analyze the data based off of what each team says that it does and trying our best to problem solve for their win conditions. So in these situations, now that these Pokemon are on the board, what are their items? I always want you guys to be thinking about this stuff. Tell me every possible thing. And you know what? If you can't tell me something, if you say like, I don't know, Google what they do, right? Uh, you, this is what this training is for. If you can never find out what you're supposed to be doing or you don't know or you're ever caught off guard, like do your best to find out ways to get out of situations do your best to do know every single move regulike can learn every single move tornadoes can learn you want to know everything um but let's see this is scarf ogre right it should be scarf ogre and i think it's gonna be sasha lucky so i wouldn't be surprised to see a couple things happen here hmm if it were me, I would like to be in the player's position, this player. Because uh, Scarf Ogre, it's a little bit pinned right here. Like, they can basically... If this is a Cobra Rillaboom as well, this could also totally be Cobra or even Vested. Like, you can just wood hammer this. If they and they, if they switch up for Serena, you just wood hammer it and you kill it. Um, they might actually switch out the Ogre for Serena and go Tailwind. Or switch out the Ogre for Serena and just Hurricane here. I definitely think an Electroweb's coming out here. And I don't really see the fake out into this slot as much. I definitely see a more of a wood hammer play. But let's go into it. So there's the grassy terrain. Switching for Serena, so we talked about that. Um, so it's going to be Spout coming. Yeah, there's Electro. Awesome. So it should be Spout. Maybe Ice Beam. There's Origin Pulse. Underrated tech Origin Pulse. Great play. So uh, first of all, I just want to say we want to go back and we want to say that we going to update our notes. Always try and take your notes in a timely matter. This also, this note taking, it's going to help you when you're actually at regionals. Everyone takes notes at regionals. Everyone's always writing them down. Make sure to build up that little, how do I put it? Multitasking muscle that lets you do two things at once. So Kyogre. I note that Kyogre was first. They selected it first. So Kyogre Torn. Serena. It's almost like it's exactly what we said. And this person went, uh, this person went Lucky Rilla. Uh, but we saw the origin pulse very underrated so in this situation um you know normally i'd like to say whenever you're taking notes you can also leave a at the end of every single game you definitely want to write down like a bunch of little cool stuff that you saw i'm gonna write down origin pulse so ogre was cool you don't see it as often anymore it's something just a note god i can spell set to put this back right there perfect so uh we see this so we switch to serena origin pulse one shot selecty so no sash lucky um and i would also be writing and this is for my notes i'd be crossing things out i'd be writing items that i think and i'd be spreading these things off into a bunch of little things when i'm taking notes i've actually made a video about how to correctly take notes in vgc i would definitely check that out uh, maybe i'll leave a link to it in the video but we're gonna see the lucky go down um and i think the Woodhammer is coming u-turn awesome that's great damage against ogre so shadow probably bringing R rilla right back out no, maybe not. Um, Lele. So we were able to correctly analyze this Pokemon, this person's four Pokemon uh, zone, basically. So Shadow Rider. And Lele. So we are able to correctly analyze this player's four Pokemon. It's a lot easier to analyze these things when you're playing against uh, matchups where they're a little bit more common. Uh, again, we think this is Scarfed. And I think another cool thing is this is going to be so much easier when you know what you're when you're reviewing your own replays and you're analyzing what your opponent's teams are going to be it's gonna be so much easier because you know what your team says that it does we're putting ourselves in these shoes and playing at such a disadvantage trying to guess everything that's happening because uh, we don't know what any of these items are in these pokemon um but it's gonna be a lot easier you were basically running something a lot harder at the start and it's gonna be so much easier when you know the games are you know when you're the one actually playing 
So, Psy Shock from Lele. So, it is going to be that Scarf Lele going uh, first before the Shadow Rider. And remember, there's an Electro Web. Just Astro Barrage, Psy Shock, double Easy Peasy, Lemon Squeezy. And we're going to see uh, the last Pokemon on the side. I want to see if it is Torn and uh, Rilla. Awesome. So I guess all four Pokemon, which is the whole point of this exercise, is getting yourself comfortable uh, playing against multiple matchups, guessing items, which is exactly what we did. Um, I would say the Shadow Rider player definitely abused the fact that the Kyogre player wanted to lead Ogre. Now, we knew the Kyogre player was going to lead Kyogre Torn, but in reality, if the Kyogre player wanted to uh, do this a little bit differently, what they could have done is... Obviously, against this type of board, there's no way that you can lead Ogre. Because Leki Rilla absolutely dumpsters it, which is exactly what happened. Scarf Ogre cannot outspeed, and if they have you sealed up with a fake card, you have to switch at your Serena, you're definitely a bit pinned. So what you should have done, if you were this player, you should have actually led with like a faster fake out Weavile and go and gone for um something like Torn. And what that would have done, that would have made them switch in Lele and not had like the correct board state. And you would have got a Tailwind out and then you bring your Ogre out. So this Ogre player could have played this a little bit better. But that's not to say that the Shadow Rider didn't play to their outs. The Shadow Rider player played absolutely perfectly given the tools that they had. Uh, and if we actually take a look, uh, the Shadow Rider player was the one that was a little bit higher rated. So it does make sense. And so being able to find each team's win condition is also pretty good. Because if we were the person playing Ogre this game and we just played that one, you know, I just talked about how the Ogre player could win. That's what you do in game two. Oh my gosh. Start thinking proactively. Think towards the future. Let's take a look at one more. Take a look at one more. All right. Refresh. Let's get another standard team. Eternatus Mirror. Do I even want to look at that? This is like... A super mirror. They both have like Grim as well. And one has Shedinja. I mean, I'll look at it. I said I wanted to look at something standard, but I'll take a look at it. So this is a good example of like uh, you know, how notes might not go the right way. So uh team four, or sorry, team five. Uh Eternatus. And I don't have a lot of experience with Eternatus, but we'll see. And, like, you see I'm, like, missing commas and doing whatever. Just get the Pokemon on the list. <laughs> uh, like, the more time you spend, like, making sure that you're doing everything perfect like that, the more time that, like, the team previews take in. All right. Team six is going to be Rilla. And there's so many other things we can go in-depth on, like, analyzing team preview, the order, the, and everything. That's for the future sessions. Gorilla. I love Entei right now. Entei is a perfect, a Pokemon is a perfect example of Pokemon that are better in these not Dynamax formats. It was great max format, but uh, it's really come into its own in this uh, non Dynamax format. Man, Feeny's so hard to see in that team preview. <laughs> Alright. Okay. So we have these. What do we think each team's going to bring? So let's start looking at this top one first. We see no Intimidates, right? We do see screens from Grimm. We see Prankster. We see forms of speed control being like Icy Wind, Tailwind from Suicune. Probably potentially Drum Beating here. Uh, Quiver over here. Landorus is a great mod in this matchup. I think Landorus is going to definitely be key for this player to win the game. Um, but I think overall, like... This team has fake outs, no intimidates, and screen, so it's going to be very, very bulky with a little bit of redirection. I like this team a lot. Uh, let's take a look at this one now. Uh, again, no intimidates, but it does have potential for sacred fire burns. Again, same fake out, drum beating, very limited speed control, like thunder waves on each side for the Grims. Icy ones from Feeny. Um, Shedinja is a very, very cool Pokemon. I think Shedinja is. Let's see if Shedinja is going to come. This can get flamethrower. This can get a dark attack. Suicune can't hit Shedinja. Rillaboom would have to be taking knockoff, which. Uh, Real Boom shouldn't be teching knockoff if it's not on, if it doesn't have Tailwind potential, because it would only really tech that Dark Attack to beat something like Shadow Rider if it could potentially outspeed with like 60 points in speed. So judging by the rest of these Pokemon, we can say that Real Boom safely does not have knockoff, and if they do, uh, they're basically made incorrectly. Tornado, or sorry, Lando shouldn't be able to hit it in Vault Can. So Vault Can, Grim maybe, and Eternatus maybe. If I were this player with Shinja, I would definitely bring it, but I would not bring it in the front. I would bring it as a switch in 
for uh, for something like Etrianus, like Dynamax Cannon, and then from there I'd like Alex Witcher or something. So Shedinja's great. Um, but let's see, what does this player want to do with Eternatus? What is their win con? Is it going to be like a redirect Volk? I think I think Volk's like very, very good here. Um, do I really think they want to bust out Volk early? I think you do. I think Volk is nice. I think Volk's a good mod to bring. And then I want to say Eternatus. Maybe this is me like... Uh, not really understanding the matchup that well, but I think Eternatus, if it is like a Cosmic Power set, I'd want to get that up early. And I don't really think I need like Suicune for Tailwind here. Suicune's also not amazing versus Shedinja. So like, I wouldn't really want to be packing my Mons with uh, things that can't hit the Shedinja. I also maybe wouldn't want to have both my Mons that can do that at, at the lead. So maybe we want to bring... I know that Lando's coming. Right? And then we need one more Mon. It might be Grim. I don't think we necessarily need it. So we have Etern, Volk, Lando. See, like, Grim in the back is pretty underwhelming. Suicune's not that great versus, like, Feeny and, uh, and Sin. I guess Suicune, if it has Snarl, it can hit Shininja. So let's see. Maybe we actually go, like, Suicune. Yeah, Suicune to turn Lando, uh, Volk. I'm gonna switch it up like that. And if we see the Suicune... Normally, Suicune would not come to this matchup, but if we see Suicune earlier at all, that means it has Snarl for Shedinja. Great stuff. And so we're able to know that. Now, let's take a look at the other team. So, we know that they want to bring Shedinja, but I don't think Shedinja is a lead at all. I think this player also wants to lead their E-turn. I think you want to go, like, Eternatus. I think Feeny's going to be in the back. I don't think that you necessarily want to lead Rilla. I think Entei's an amazing lead a lot of the time. Um, so, I think it's going to be more like Eternatus... And again, I'm not like a big Eternatus player. Uh, so it's it's really hard for me to understand this, but you know, that's what, uh, that's the whole point of this team building process to get yourself comfortable because part two is starting to think of team cores. And this is where you get the experience playing these other teams, putting yourself in the driver's seat with them. So Etern and Entei, I definitely think are coming. I think Shedinja's coming. And I think Feeny's coming too. Uh, personally, I think Feeny's great here because it makes so you can switch in with your... Uh, Fairy type to block a Dynamax Cannon, then it weakens Dynamax Cannons, and then like your Feeny is like a huge bully, uh, like like with water attacks over here. Moonboss is still good, potentially Haze. Uh, so I, I I would personally bring Feeny if I were this player, but you know, let's see how this goes. I would personally bring Feeny, maybe, and this person in the 1400s, so like they're probably about as good as me. So let's go back and start this off. So there's the E-turn, there's the Suicune. It's like I play the game! Look at that! Like, I'm, I'm not saying I'm surprised, because, like, I've, I put the work in to do this, but look at it! I mean, it's exactly like what we said. We were able to analyze their leads perfectly by putting ourselves in the position of the other player. And this, again, is that big tell that the Suicune probably does have Snarl. Versus Grim and Etern. So, we don't see Entei. We see Grim. So, let's uh, write down the leads. Suicune, and we see Grim, and two Etern. So what is Grim bringing to the table? Why do they bring Grim? And now that we see the Grim, what have they cut? All right, what have they cut now that they have Grim? Um, I think, so if we were to say it like this, we see Grim Eternatus, right? If they were to have Shedinja here as their third slot, and then Feeny, they have like no damage. Um, so I still think that, I think that maybe they cut the Feeny. I'm thinking that they cut the Feeny. So in this player's mind, they should be knowing that there's probably, you right, you can't even see where I'm using my mic, my mouse, uh, well, mouse. but in the top player's mind, they shouldn't even, they should know that there is potentially no Feeny because we see this Grim. Because I feel you still have to bring Entei. Maybe they brought the Feeny instead of the Entei to deal with the Landorus, but I still think Entei is super good in this situation. So let's just keep going into it. Uh, what do you think is going to happen here? Snarl's okay. I don't necessarily think you need Tailwind. I think, like, Eastern Anuses don't really carry Protect that often. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Dynamax Cannon in here. And maybe something like a Snarl. Maybe a Tailwind. Who knows? So, big pressure's up. Protect. All right, so what does Protect say? Protect says you probably have a Black Sludge set, right? And you're going to be playing a little bit more value each turn. So, probably Protect Tailwind this turn. Uh, remember, Suicune can't get Intimidated or Fake Outed. So, it's really, really good versus those uh, Fake Out Bonds. And so it's probably gonna be like protect, maybe like a it could be like a protect life orb set with like dynamax cannon, flamethrower, sludge bomb. That's also a very, very good set right now. 
So we see Light Scream from Grim and Sludge Bomb right away into the Suicune, and they get the poison, sometimes lucky. There's a roar into the Grim. So we see Rilla. Wow. We see the Rilla. All right. That's a really unlucky roar bringing out a Rilla to fight the Suicune. Maybe the Suicune could have Rainbow Berry. We haven't seen Lefties yet. So this game is completely deviated on the bottom player. And so this is a perfect example of how I was talking about like when things deviate, think about why. So what have they cut? Did they cut their Shedinja? It, they must have cut their Shedinja, right? They, I guess they could still have Shedinja, but it's looking to me like they cut the Shedinja. Because Rilla's okay. I still think they should have Feeny in the back. I really, really do think they should still have Feeny in the back because that's that's how this team beats the Lando, right? Is the Feeny in the back. So let's see. They have new fake out pressure in this slot. That's very bad. Uh, and Suicune's poisoned. And it looks like we don't see leftovers. So we're hard switching out into our own Rilla to block the fake out and potentially Dynamax Cannon. So it's fake out there. Meteor Beam. So this one's this guy's Meteor Beam over here. I want to see Rilla. Note that on this guy, I also didn't write down this guy bringing his Rilla. So both players bought Rilla, and that's something that I wouldn't think. If I were an Eternatus player, I would not bring my Rilla to fight other Eternatus. Eternatus has Sludge Bomb Stab. Eternatus has Flamethrower. That's not something that I would personally know. So in, in the notes here, write down these notes. Both players brought Rilla to the Etern Mirror. There must be something there that we can go back and review in our notes that I'm just not realizing the value. Maybe it's, this guy could have just brought Rilla to beat that Suicune, and that's literally it. But like, I would not bring Rilla to fight against Eternatus and Volk personally, so I'm very, very surprised to see it. Maybe they really, really value that fake out. So there's a Meteor Beam. Doesn't do a lot. It's going to be a Vested Rilla. You can see that's best right there. And there's that Snarl that we talked about. Absolutely massive. Really, really good to know. White Herb Rilla. White Herb Rilla. That's another... This, these guys are all over the place. White Herb Rilla, Meteor Beam, uh, Eternatus, and Assault Vested Rilla over there. Really, really cool stuff. So there's the Etern switch back in. There's still a Light Screen up. Sludge Bomb takes out the Rilla. And we haven't seen Orb or anything yet. Knock Off Rilla. So this guy having Knock Off, we talked about that. Both players really having knockoff. You should not have knockoff on your Rillas if there is no way to get like a Tailwind up, uh, in my personal opinion, just because you go Tailwind and then you knock off their Shadow Rider, which can one-shot it. If you're trying to soak the damage on a Rilla that's White Herb, they'll just kill you. So like, I think it's a little bit weird to see knockoff there, but you know, it is what it is. Where are we knocking off? Orb uh, knocked off on the Protect Eternatus, which we talked about. And then the Lando, awesome. Knew that Lando still had to come. So this guy cut Volk, which I would argue Volks would have been really, really good here instead of Rilla for Lando. Switch back in the Grim. U-turn. So it's going to be a scarfed Lando because Lando would not be outspeeding these guys. Um, Yeah, Lando, Lando would have been scarfed. So we dumpstered that. Hard switch is back in here. Um, so you see the e here has Meteor Beam Sludge Bomb. He didn't go for Dynamax Cannon. So that's one thing to note for later. Fake out gets taken. There's the flinch. We see the Dynamax Cannon. Meteor Beam. He's hard charging a Meteor Beam. He's a charging his laser right now. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Grassy Rain's gone. He needs to switch out. And there's the Entei. So the Entei still came. So no Feeny. So they brought the Rilla instead of Feeny. So both players brought the Rilla. And I'd argue that both players misplayed by bringing the Rilla. I think Valk would have been better for the top player. And I think Rilla would have been... Sorry, I think Feeny would have been better for this bottom player. But that's just my personal opinion. Feeny might have a really weird set, and the reason they didn't bring it, it might have like a haze set for Zern or something weird. So Feeny might be some sort of crazy anti-meta weird Feeny set and not at all standard, which would make sense why they didn't bring it. So if we're going into game two and you think, wow, they didn't bring their Feeny, the reason is maybe it just does not work in this matchup, right? Same thing. This guy might not have brought his Valk because his Valk might be like a choice scarf Valk to like revenge KO Zashian or something. So the fact that it didn't, didn't come in this situation, we're able to analyze this a little bit more based off their play style. So there's another Snarl. Snarl's been really, really impactful. Suicune's been, Suicune's been killing it. Um, love this for Suicune right now. It sucks it got poisoned on the first turn. So really, let me switch back in. Reactivating that grassy terrain. Very, very good play. There's the final Dynamax Cannon. That looks to be a vested Entei based off how well it ate that. And the Snarl spams are real on both sides. That Suicune, ah, I don't want to say, yeah, it dies right here. That's unfortunate because this Entei, oh, that's, this is really good. Yeah, that's a scoop. Um... Let's see, who won the uh, Scytherium? Yeah, so the top player... Hold on. Yeah, top player... Wait, I can't tell who won. 
Fusionist is on the top. And Cytherium 1? Wait, why did the Fusionist leave? They could just protect and then kill everything. I don't understand. Lando seemed like in a great spot. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Why would that player just leave? Huh. That's weird. It's a Cytherium 1, but like this player right here with their Eternatus and their... The Grim was already down. The Eternatus was... The Eternatus was healthy, but like Lando kind of just wins. That's oh, weird. But we were correctly able to analyze three of the four mons. Um, and then both bringing Rilla was kind of weird. Uh, I would say the top player got poisoned and got a little bit unlucky throughout the course of that game, but they were still in a great spot. So maybe the, the reason why they scooped is Lando might not have protect. It was it was a choice scarf Lando. We saw that because it U-turned. And maybe he didn't want to get like fake out snarled and he just scooped early. But, you know, force your opponent to hit that snarl. You weren't that behind. Um, you know, you could flamethrower burn that guy. Earth power still kills there. Earth power crit would KO the E turn and you win the game. So I think the top player still definitely had shots. I don't think I would think that was definitely a premature run, but I'm all for like saving, like revealing information. But at this point, all your information is revealed. So you might as well just play it out. Um, I would say though, that both players bought real instead. That was something cool to notice. And we learned a lot more about the E turn smear that we would not have normally learned if we weren't taking these notes. Uh, I would say if you had a good time watching this video, think about letting me know in the comments. Go check out this free to view Patreon post and start working on these 10 steps in your own games. Uh, hopefully you guys had a good time. Hopefully you guys had a good time watching this video. If you guys have any questions, think about leaving them in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. We're working on this over the course of the next couple months. Like I said, this is a one to two month process that I like to go over in my own games to build teams for tournaments. And this first step is basically just gathering a crap ton of info and putting yourself trying trying your best to put yourself in your opponent's shoes and see what they do given the information presented to them so thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time peace out